This Tony Award season includes several shows that began performances pre-pandemic, including Best Musical Nominees, Girl from the North Country, and Six, originally set to open March 12th, 2020, the day Broadway shut down. While it stars like Hugh Jackman and Billy Crystal who are nominated, understudies who helped keep Broadway running this season will also be honored. How do you think the pursuit of the American dream and the immigrant experience shifted since the musical came out because a lot has. We are finally here just watching those clips of the Lion King in Chicago in teasing this story just gave me all the chills. So much excitement <laughs> to be back. And this has been a long Tony Award season from 2019 when Moulin Rouge opened in July. It was my first time at a dress rehearsal for a Broadway show. And of course, my first time back in a Broadway theater in a year and a half. How does it feel to be Tony nominated? I got them in the mail the other day with a discount code, so don't throw away your mail. Come From Away is helping Broadway productions shut down for 18 months emerge from the pandemic. The vaccine mandate itself is not impacting ticket sales. If anything, I think it's encouraging more people to feel safe inside a Broadway theater because everyone inside is vaccinated. At nine months pregnant, actress Kanita R. Miller danced up a storm eight shows a week in For Colored Girls, who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. She's up for a Tony Award Sunday for Best Featured Actress in a Play. My favorite line is like the last one that I get to say is, I found God in myself and I loved her. I loved her fiercely. To be a, a part of something that's kind of instilling this mantra in me, I'm like, I just hope that she's absorbing it as well. Her daughter, Nova Pearl, arrived just days after Miller went on maternity leave from the show, which earned seven nominations, including Best Revival of a Play. Off this year's season with 34 eligible shows, including MJ the Musical and the internationally popular Six, was a feat after COVID forced the cancellation of countless performances. Hello, dearies. Tony nominee and Mrs. Doubtfire star Rob McClure had his show shut down three times during the pandemic. It's not just a celebration of, of, of my work or even the work of my show, but the resilience of this community. While it stars like Hugh Jackman and Billy Crystal who are nominated, understudies who helped keep Broadway running this season will also be honored. They will be seen and they will be heard and they will be celebrated. Tony Awards show host Ariana DeBose returns to her roots among the Broadway community after winning an Oscar as Anita in West Side Story. I don't necessarily feel pressure but I feel like a tremendous sense of responsibility. Sunday's show will feature performances from The Music Man and other Tony-nominated musicals, all of it a chance to celebrate the best of Broadway and reach audiences far beyond the footlights. Lee Sheps, CBS News, New York. The Tony nominations have been announced and the musical A Strange Loop leads the pack with 11 nods. Here's Lee Sheps. Blackness, queerness. A Strange Loop tells the story of a young black theater usher writing a musical about a young black theater usher cycling through his own self-perception and feelings of self-hatred. Michael R. Jackson is the playwright. How does it feel to be Tony nominated? It feels um, like a validation of almost two decades of work that I put into this one piece of art. Jackson started writing A Strange Loop at age 23. As an off-Broadway musical, it won the Pulitzer Prize for Drama. Now it's reaching a larger audience at the Lyceum Theater on Broadway. I think I was surprised initially when we were off-Broadway, I thought because the show seems so specific and so, some would say niche, that oh, it's only going to resonate if you're a Black gay man. That experience is so specific that it's universal because it's just about being a person. Jackson is part of a groundswell of Black talent on Broadway this season, with many artists tackling racial themes. Hey! Hey! For colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough earned seven Tony Award nominations. Two for Camille A. Brown, with nods for directing and choreographing the revival. This Tony Award season includes several shows that began performances pre-pandemic, including Best Musical Nominees, Girl from the North Country, and Six, originally set to open March 12th, 2020, the day Broadway shut down. The Music Man, starring Hugh Jackman and Sutton Foster, was one of three shows to pick up a nomination for Best Musical Revival. Notably left off the list, Funny Girl. 
It's the first Broadway revival of the show Barbara Streisand made popular 58 years ago. Lee Sheps, CBS News, New York. Before there was Hamilton, Alexander Hamilton. There was In the Heights. Lin Manuel Miranda's first Broadway show to win Best Musical. The 2008 smash hit is now a major motion picture directed by John M. Chu. The jubilant film gives new life to a story and characters that hit close to the heart for the Tony, Emmy, and Grammy winning composer. I'm just very proud that this is a musical about Latino immigrants that is written by Latinos with joy and love. And then the fun for me was in getting to talk to these characters again. Can we make a little noise tonight? How do you think the pursuit of the American dream and the immigrant experience shifted since the musical came out? Because a lot has. A lot has. And when I think of Sonny's lyrics in 2008 about immigration, uh, he says, what about immigration? Politicians be hating. Racism in this nation's gone from latent to blatant. How much more true is that, sadly, in 2021 uh, than, it, than it was in, even in 2008? The film stars Anthony Ramos as Usnavi, a young bodega owner with dreams of a better life. Miranda, who started writing the show in college, originated the role on Broadway while still in his 20s. At what point in discussions of making the film did you say that you just can't play Usnavi? Oh, I think that became sort of clear over the course of it. The, the, the fight then became what I was going to do in the movie. I was very happy to sit in my writer's chair and, and cheer on this cast because it's so much about community and, and, and the, this cast making it their own and finding their own community. He now plays Piraguero, selling flavored ices so to the neighborhood. It was a sure way the creative team felt the song Paragua wouldn't get cut. Because there's no plot in Piragua, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like it encapsulates, it's, it's a metaphor for the entire neighborhood, right? Like life is hard, prices are going up, but we keep scraping by. The film has been updated since its Broadway run. One song lyric in 96,000 has a small but notable change. Uh, businessman richer than Nina's daddy. Tiger Woods and I on the links and he's my caddy. The lyric originally name dropped Donald Trump. When I wrote that lyric in 2005, he was a reality TV host. He was just sort of like the human version of the Monopoly man uh, when I was growing up. And, and when his name came to be associated with some of the most divisive, hateful rhetoric at Latino people that I think we've had from an administration, um, you know, obviously the connotation just changes. It just had no business being in that song. And after such a heartbreaking year, Miranda hopes the film many are already calling the hottest movie of the summer brings love and joy to audiences everywhere. In Washington Heights. I'm Lee Sheps for CBS News.